you will feel a job mm, now. And that's it. Baby's awake. My baby over the tongue, <laughs> and then you're lost. It's somewhere in the gums now. I just need to see my midline. To be honest, when we came up here and met the professor, um, on that day, we were wathering on both sides to terminate the pregnancy. Um, when he gave us our options, I think we both realised then that there was no option and we had to really go through with this procedure. Yeah. You just think, quick way out, you know, we'll terminate it. We've got a two-year-old, it's going to disrupt her life, we're going to be miles away from home, we're going to be constantly in an intensive care, there's no guarantees. And then when you actually start thinking about it, it's your baby, it's my child, and it's not something that is tiny and trivial where you can just get rid of one day and, and never think about it again. Um, we thought about it and you see them on the little screen and they're kicking and they're happy and that's our baby, so we didn't really have a choice but to continue it probably would have haunted us forever if we'd have done anything different. There. No. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I will go down. And that's the tip of the nose. <laughs> Problem is that this baby is still awake but then but that's the that, that's the, the nostril. So I will just follow the foot from there. That's the mouth. That's the the lower lip, so we go the compression of the lungs within the thorax by the liver and the guts is so very great that the lungs do not develop normally if we wait until the baby is born uh, before we operate the baby will go will die because there will not be enough lung tissue for the baby to survive it is in those cases where our prediction is that if we do not do anything, the babies will die after birth, that we choose to carry out a prenatal surgery. Ovila, tank. And then I come back a bit. Okay. Our prediction from the babies that we selected to carry out the operation it was that uh, the chances of this baby survival w surviving were less than 20 percent and we found that about half of these babies survived so in simple terms on the basis of our prediction we improved the survival from about 20 percent to 50 percent really wait yeah <coughs> no Point six, point seven. I did touch. You touched. Yeah, yeah. So it's just the. Uh, oh, it's point seven. What what is the point? Somebody could say, uh, engaging in such a lot of effort uh, in order to save. Uh, such a, a minute number of babies when their babies dying throughout the world from diarrhea, from starvation, from uh, malnutrition, from severe premature labor. I think it is extremely important in terms of uh, the individual families. You do not measure the value of life on an international basis when you're dealing with an individual. Uh, it is extremely important from the perspective of fetal surgery because those people that are, that are actively involved in fetal medicine, they, they want to break the barriers. They don't want to uh, admit uh, defeat. And the breaking of a barrier, that philosophy, in the context of the very rare condition, 
will lead to an ideology, a way of thinking that deals with the more common things. Again, nostril, filtrum, mouth, tongue. Our center that is pioneering fetal surgical techniques for the very, very rare is at the same time very actively involved in finding out ways of predicting premature delivery, uh, preeclampsia, high blood pressure in pregnancy, and dealing with these conditions that are, are, are much more common. Then we need to wait to see whether the baby goes to sleep or not. And then, like this. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs>